What up? I realized that my mural practice pretty much splits up into two different project types. One is sort of the random colorful things that I sketch in my sketchbook and eventually paint. And the other are impactful, but still colorful, community-oriented murals. And this current project is an example of the latter. I was invited by a family health service center in the great city of Worcester, Massachusetts, to paint a mural in their entrance wall, and I was super pumped. I worked with students on a previous massive project at an elementary school, and it was super fun, so we got right to work on the first day. I love involving kids because uh, I learned in my psychology classes that it improves their sense of belongingness within their space, and it also just sparks creativity in general. You can see kind of the different things that they drew and we'll talk a little bit about those later and i also just love chatting with kids because they're hilarious they're hilarious if they aren't in that kind of weird teen stage where they're too cool for this type of stuff which luckily these guys weren't but we chatted about their favorite things like plants sports animals whatnot and after some initial icebreaker questions i then started asking them about the organization itself sort of what it means to them why it's important to them and their families and i like to leave these questions pretty open kind of to let them talk about whatever they want to talk to because i think it's all important so after that initial brainstorming session i gave myself a day to come up with the sketch. My partner and I love the city of Worcester, so we got up to some grocery shopping, some coffee drinking, and of course, sketching. For this piece, I decided to integrate both a collage style that I've been developing and a common signature in the wavy line that's seen in most of my previous pieces. I love this energy and this flow that I was getting, and I wanted the majority of the action to end in the circle towards the right. While that right side is very detailed and symbolic, I chose to make the beginning of the line more abstracted. The whole concept sort of describes a night drive that ends at the organization. You follow the beginning of the line, which is made up of scattered stars, and it leads towards a rising sun and mountains that surround Worcester in real life. You then follow the van, which says the name of the organization and is also an actual van that they transport students in. And you go through a tunnel, which is a reference to a real nearby tunnel, and you enter the wonderfulness and joyous place that is this organization. After coming up with that design and, you know, a few back and forth decisions with the org, it was time to paint. We started by uh, covering the ground. I, I've never been uh, made aware that the floor cannot get any paint on it, which is fair because it was made of carpet. So we put a bunch of tape, drop cloths, paper, and whatnot. And uh, we brought a limited palette for this because from a previous project, I know that it's nice to save your money on supplies, but then also just have a sort of cohesive piece that you're able to, you know, use throughout the whole mural. So I went for a blue to light green gradient. Um, I did end up buying the middle blue to mix and blend with the other colors, but that's fine. Um, we primed the entirety of the wall, which took a little bit longer than we thought, but the little nooks and crannies and chipped corners needed some attention. From there, I used a technique that I learned during my time as a muralist assistant where we used chalk to sketch the mural. I actually tried to use other colored chalk, but it didn't wipe away as cleanly as the white chalk, so... That was annoying. But from there, I roughed in the wavy line and I was happy with it. And I filled it in with this nice purple magenta pink color, um, which kind of is similar to their organization color. And yeah, I feel like it's important at this point to mention that I wanted this mural to be rugged. Um, if you've seen my previous video, I've been leaning into more of the handmade textures that's created when you're painting in a loosey goosey manner. Um, so I dig it. And I'm, I'm doing some techniques to sort of make that happen. like. Um, dry brush techniques and, and you know not saturating the roller as much as I usually would. From there we continued to touch up the background and it was time for the sketching. Now one thing that I generally struggle with is composition. Uh, I love painting and just going for it but sometimes thinking about the way the subjects are working together is a little bit difficult for me. I think I just need to step back more but um, I get so engrossed sometimes that that's difficult. Um, and it's actually the reason I've gotten into photography recently because you're sort of finding these compositions in real life in just the space around you. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that, I'm working on that. Nevertheless, we continued. I alluded to earlier in the video that the people that were in charge of this mural um, really wanted some specific elements to be in there. Um, so it kind of led to me adding them last second, which is totally fine, right? Um, they have their goals, I have mine. Um, so this is no hate towards them, I love them. But there's some elements that I really love and I thought were super strong, uh, like the smiley face with the basketball on it um, towards the, the, the colorful side, because uh, there's a popular court just across the street and the smiley face was invented in Worcester, so, um, yeah. Yeah, I also really enjoyed the kid at the bottom on the swing, I think that's funny. And then the watering can with the little, with the little, uh, the stem? No, what do you call that? With the vine, this the watering can with the vine sort of wrapping around it, I thought that was cool. And after sketching these elements in, I thought that I should directly outline them, but I then voted against it because I thought it would double the work and then we would have to go over it anyways. So I started filling. I remember having so much anxiety the night before about doing the fills because I was having flashbacks to the painting uh, another mural that I worked on and there were so many small parts that we missed. Um, but that was easier because we had spray cans and we could just, you know, pick and choose what colors we wanted. But for this one, it was like all mixing on the fly. So 
we could undermix the colors, which I was kind of scared of. And of course, my worries came true, but not, you know, in a terrible sense. Um, it just ended up taking the most time out of this whole project, surprisingly enough. Um, and I want to say that we were working from eight to eight every day, but because it's a working building, it was realistically from like 11 to five, uh, four days, or I guess three days of full painting. But we got into this nice groove of being comfortable in the space, drinking some hot apple cider, which they had upstairs. And I didn't mention this before, but the kids also helped in finalizing the design. And um, I just want to apologize to the one kid who wanted a Boston Terrier. Uh, I'm a cat guy, so I included a cat, I'm sorry. They also helped with painting the background, um, which was, you know, a little less than successful, but it's good for them to have that experience. Regardless, we were feeling good about our last day and we could have called it there, but instead I opted to come back Saturday to be there with fresh eyes and an open heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted to talk about why I do these murals. They don't always pay the bills, but I'm grateful to the person who invited us uh, from this organization. Um, for applying for the grant to make this happen. Uh, I love giving back to communities, especially those that reflect the background that I came from. Um, although I didn't go to a center like this, I attended an after school program uh, like this one. Um, and I think it's super important to create spaces like this for kids to express themselves and make friends and eat nutritious food that isn't always available at home. Also, this place serves a lot of low income people of color um, like myself. So, you know, I'm always happy to help. And, and that's a common theme throughout my work, I guess, in general. Um, so this was kind of a perfect project within my lane. I want to talk about the integration of all these symbols that they wanted. Um, it's almost second nature to me at this point. It's kind of funny. I remember being so worked up about not being able to find my style, which I assume some people who are watching this video also feel. And I thought that doing projects like this aren't super helpful towards that because they kind of want you to paint something. But I was wrong. Doing these projects give me a lot of freedom in the visual aspect of this, especially if they're not so keen on a specific style and whatnot. Yeah, there were some specific things that they wanted, um, but I was able to draw them in any way that I wanted to, so I had fun with that. I sketched each of these out in my iPad and I was having a blast drawing and really nailing the style that I wanted to go for. So with a ton of energy, we cracked out the final fills and finished the outline with black. I used a brush for that black outline. Some people were saying to use a Posca pen, but in my opinion, Posca pens for murals are a little bit not the best, especially the ones that I had. Um, because they're, the lines aren't as consistent, you know, with the wall, they kind of shake a little bit. Um, you have to be super precarious and also the coverage isn't the best for my opinion, from my experiences. Um, but yeah, from there we finished the mural and the people were so happy about it. And they were also happy about how quickly it took because sometimes murals could take weeks and weeks and weeks, not mine personally, but I know in general. Um, and some people kind of get tired of the smell of paint and, and just being around that, having to, having to watch their shoes to step into paint, you know? Um, but I love painting click quickly and this mural was no different. Um, and all in all, it took around three and a quarter days to, to finish, uh, which probably was around 20 hours with two people working on it, me and my assistant. And yeah, I'm always happy to create spaces like this because I think projects like these are beautiful. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, we came back on that quarter on the last day because it's always important to, um, to finish a piece at the beginning of a day as opposed to at the end of the day because when you're at the end of the day, you're tired, you're overworked, you're gonna over, you're not gonna produce the best final product, right? But you're gonna wanna go home and just finish it all. Um, but you know, coming back on that next day with fresh eyes and fresh mind and new energy, we were able to finish it um, and, and take some nice photos of it and we we're proud of it. Um, so yeah. <laughs>